Hello everyone and welcome back to Solar System Tourism in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul. This episode is primarily dedicated to missions to Mercury, first with Arthur E. King himself, the commissioner of these particular missions. And the goal is to get stuff into orbit around Mercury, but because we are using ion engines, albeit quite a lot of ion engines <laughs> packed together, uh, 50 uh, in, in that particular vehicle, uh, they are not enough to do these burns quickly enough to make the capture around Mercury. So ultimately what we're going to have to do is multiple passes. So here you can see me trying to take care of as much of this as possible before we get into Mercury SOI, but we really can't manage too much. And because there are other missions that have to do burns, let's say we take two days with this mission doing an ion engine burn, right? But then up in the left hand corner at Kerbal Alarm Clock, I see that there is another mission that's on its way. In this case, the Mercury Station with Katak, who is Arthur's girlfriend, who is on board a separate piece because I didn't know at the time that she would be going along as well. Uh, so we need to do the burn with this. And so I have to jump between the ships and each of them is taking a long time to do the burns. In this case though, we start off with the nuclear engines here. That's good, but in any case, the main part of capture around Mercury is going to be with the ion engines and to do 10,000 meters per second or thereabouts, which is what it takes. It's just very taxing and it takes a long time. Uh, actually, something like 20 days. The orbit of Mercury is 88 days, so we can't really do these very quickly and therefore we are going to have to make a multiple passes at Mercury to make these captured burns happen, even if I do the burns primarily outside Mercury's SOI well ahead of time. There's just not enough time. Uh, if we do it too far away from the Mercury encounter, we end up not actually encountering Mercury anymore. So anyway, here we are separating from the nuclear stage and getting on with the ion engine burn. Thankfully, at least, of course, we can use the ion engines during time warp, during full time warp, as long as SAS is on, thanks to uh, persistent thrust and the way KSB Interstellar works. I configured these engines specifically to take advantage of KSB Interstellar's version of persistent thrust. So here we've got a Mercury probe this time. And this one, we don't have to wait so long on. This one is not an ion engine burn. So it's got a nuclear engine first and then hypergolic stages because it's just a resource scanner probe, just the usual one, the stock one that's modified to scan for resources. Well, it's actually just scanning for ore. It just so happens that I modified the converters to be able to turn ore into uh, real fuel resources. But we encountered a completely different problem with this. It was looking good. Uh, it was tight, but it was looking good for capture. But then when I tried to stage at this point between the two hypergolic stages, the game crashed. And I tried it again because uh, it didn't update the persistent file. I tried it again and the game crashed again. So I did what I could. Uh, so this is after trying again and getting the same result. I don't know why staging at that point would for some reason crash the game. It didn't make any sense to me and I've used the engines in question before. But anyway, you can't argue with the fact that the game has crashed. So I just went ahead and did what I could and it might do another pass uh, to try and get to Mercury as well. But honestly, I, the, this one was just goners. So no Mercury resource scanner probe as it turns out. This is the supply vessel. You can see the huge load of food, water, and oxygen there. And that's more for what inevitably will actually happen. Uh, technically, Arthur and Katak have plenty of supplies for themselves if the mission went along properly and we had went back to Earth at the appropriate time. We are not going to be doing the mission the smooth way and getting back to Earth the appropriate time, so Thankfully, we do have the additional supply vessel coming along. So here we go again with Arthur at a pass by Mercury here. Uh, the ion engines are on here. You can see the thrust is at full there and we're slowly, slowly getting some Delta V out. But you can see how little we get, even though we're at 100x time warp right now. 
So, yes, it's complicated. It's very complicated with the ion engines. The interval that we are in Mercury SOI is just a matter of hours. So, yeah. We were just swinging right by really fast there. And this is the return ship. This would push Arthur's ship back and it is also making a pass by Mercury not able to capture. It's got lots and lots of Delta V, but most of that is to push Arthur back home. So, yeah, it's going to be complicated with these Mercury missions. They all flew by. None of them captured at this stage. Replotting for the next encounter is not trivial, incidentally. Uh, it takes a little bit of finagling to try and get a re-encounter with Mercury, and in some cases it took three different nodes to make sure that would happen because of the nature of our initial approach, which was sort of off-plane. We did not... Oh! Well, and here we have the launch of the Lynx spacecraft on the Sajita rocket, and I made that Sajita launch platform that just toppled. Uh, perhaps should make it a little bit heavier so it doesn't topple so easily, but I was wise enough not to give the upper portions of it colliders, so it doesn't have any risk of actually hitting the rocket. <laughs> Uh, here we have Mikko Gagozov going to Skylab 2 to pick up It's Nico. It's Nico wanted to go from Skylab 2 to the International Space Station. And so we're just gonna recover It's Nico and then send It's Nico back up on a supply mission to the International Space Station using the shuttle. But the Lynx spacecraft is good for uh, doing low Earth orbit operations in this case. It's got a pretty high delta v service module it can do much more than this on different rockets but with the sajita single stick and that's basically with five 1000 kilonewton engines on the first stage and then one 1000 kilonewton engine on the second stage uh, it can launch this with a slightly lightened service module for low earth orbit operations anyway here we are approaching skylab 2. miko will eventually pay for a trip to Uranus, out of all things, and specifically to the moon Miranda, which is going to be fun. Uh, that trip takes 20 years, and at the pace I'm going, who knows whether he's ever gonna arrive. But for now, he gets a little moment to do a quickie mission, instead of having to go all the way out to Uranus, where we may never catch up with him again. Oh, incidentally, uh, the black square at the bottom is just covering up a stream-specific thing that I had going on there. And here we are, undocking the Lynx after picking up its Nico. Or its Nico. And deorbiting. Very simple sort of pickup. But I always like putting my Lynx spacecraft to use. There goes the trunk. You can see, if you ever watched the design of a pressure-fed lander stage video, basically the service module is built around the lander stage that is designed in that video, which is a mephalox stage. And re-entry. The latter stage of re-entry. And finally... Well, not really splashdown, it landed on the ground, but recoverable, so there we go. And launch of the Space Shuttle Discovery, and this is resupplying the ISS plus bringing its Nico there. So, off we go. Nice to use the shuttle again, even though it's a little bit troublesome docking it and also bringing it back, of course. We won't bring the shuttle back in this episode, in this live stream that occurred actually on August 1st. And I mentioned that because we're going to get something in the bottom right corner pretty soon as the boosters go off there. So happen other space events were going on on August 1st. And it was the undocking of Demo Mission 2 with Robert Benkin and Doug Hurley. So we were watching that. Uh, that'll come up soon. And so sort of interesting to have the shuttle docking to the station when they're undocking from the station in their Dragon spacecraft. 
So that's going on down there, but I've decided to mute that because otherwise people will be talking when I'm trying to talk here. So it would not be very good in the audio sense. So lining up the shuttle, actually I let it tumble for quite longer than I normally would, but I get to do that. NASA can't do that. They're not allowed to do that. But here we are stabilized and lining up properly. Again, because of, for some reason, SAS and Smart ASS can't hold the shuttle properly when controlling from the docking port. I have to control from the cockpit while doing this. And so I have to line it up manually and do all the stuff completely manually and not have control from the docking port. So it's a little bit awkward. And in this case, didn't quite get that right there. So working on that, it's awkward. When we've got this huge shuttle next to the station. Can we get that done? There's no magnetism with the docking ports, you can see, but there's also a sort of a weird angle with them right there. So I think I had to back away. And then here we go again. And smashing them together. <laughs> and there we go. The shuttle is docked. And our passenger goes on board the ISS. And we also transfer the food, water, and oxygen to supply containers on the ISS. So that's what it looks like, though I still had the stream down there on the right. I wish, at least uh, during this portion when I had the UI off, I also turned the stream off. But anyway, it turned out that we had an empty HTV on the station at this point, so I decided to deorbit that. And so with the sight of it backing away from the station, and of course, nice views of the station with the shuttle, though a little bit of lag because, well, a lot of lag because not only is the station and the shuttle there, but I'm also trying to stream that stream in the bottom right. With all that going on, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.